guys! Welcome back to the 12 Days of Watercolor Christmas Card Painting Challenge. So this is day two of the painting challenge, or the paint-a-thon, and we are going to be painting a cute little penguin today. Now day one, if you missed it, was of the cardinal, and the colors are very similar. There's a little bit of difference. We'll talk about that in a minute. So at the end of the 12 days, hopefully I can get this done by Christmas, by the end of 12 days we are going to have 12 cards, all of them 6 inch by 9 inch or 15 centimeters by 23. And we'll have a set of very unique Christmas cards or holiday cards or winter cards because not all of them really do pertain specifically to Christmas. So yeah, we're going to have 12 cards. How exciting is that? Okay, and by the way, I'm Cheryl or Terracotta. Okay, so let's talk about brushes. I am using the Silver Black Velvet, size four. I always use this brush, and I'm also using the nail brush, which is a double zero. In my hand is another small, very small brush, and it's also a double zero, and you can see that it's much finer. Just FYI, there is no uniformity in brush sizes across the brands. So every brand is unique among itself. So when I say I'm using a double zero, you might go out and buy one and it will be quite different. Just FYI. So I choose this larger nail brush because it has a longer bristle, it holds more water, water and it's very flexible. The smaller one is good for detail. Maybe the pupil of an eye or something. For this painting, I want to keep it really simple. I'm going to be using these two brushes, size 4, silver black velvet, and the nail brush, which is a double zero, which has a longer bristle. I'll also be using the 2 inch wide Princeton Neptune, and this is a brush that will lay down an even sheen of water across the canvas, which is really important for what we're doing today. And like last time, I'm going to be using some more of that Echoline White Watercolor Ink. And if you have gouache, it's perfectly acceptable. You'll get the same results. Washi tape is really good for preserving the edging around the paper. And of course, we're going to be needing some fresh water. Two glasses, one for cleaning the brush and one for bringing on fresh water onto our palette. Okay, so we have our image here and we're going to transfer that to this paper and I'm just going to show you simply how to do that. We're going to start with a circle and then a light bulb <laughs> or maybe a pear. So I think, you know, this size, it's, oh by the way, this paper is the same size as the paper that we're going to be transferring to. So that makes us center our little object very well. So let's put it right across here. This is um, halfway point, maybe another third of the way up. Bring it over a little bit, and our circle is going to be about there. We're going to adjust it later. We just want to get it down there. And let's get our little light bulb in. And the light bulb isn't going to be straight up and down. It's going to be at a little bit of an angle because there's movement. So this will come down. And let's get our little light bulb like that. Okay, and I might get it rounder. It's the right. And I think it's going to be shorter. Maybe that's good. Okay. And by the way, I'm drawing so lightly, I just have to swipe a few times and I've already lifted it. So I think I want to have a little bit, a little bit more bum, <laughs> and this will come down. I'm gonna have the legs, or the arms are gonna come across this way. So one arm will come around and swoop down and over, and this one is going to be shorter. We'll just bring it down like here's the shoulder. It will be starting here, and that looks pretty good to me. Okay, so 
What else? The feet are the hardest part. Let's get the face first, and then we know how to position the feet by the position of the face. So this is the center, and we're going to bring that uh, the mouth over, the cute little beak over, to about here, and it's going to be it's like flying a kite. So it'll be longer on this side, and then shorter on the other. So we're going to put that kite about right here. Uh, right here. Um, so then you'll, this is the face that comes down. The face is going to come around this way. So our little nose or beak is going to come over here and then we're going to smile it shorter. And this will come down and then we're going to make it, ooh, we're going to make it into a little square at the bottom. And then that will come up. And I'll bring that down a little bit more. Erase that center. That's pretty good. Very cheerful little guy. A little bit more cheerful than this guy, but I'm going to leave it. So then the eye, if you put the eye too close, it's going to be a snowman. So let's move the eye um, maybe back to the smile that little lifted part and then up above that and we'll make it round and we'll have another one and I think I want to bring it over just a little bit more because mine is looking a little bit like a snowman and it's still looking like a snowman so I need to probably bring that mouth down yes I do so this is uh, basically how to the face, you know, getting the face right is a little bit the tricky part. But this is pretty simple how to make your uh, and I think its face needs to be a little bit rounder to accommodate that big smile. We'll have a eye there and another one here. And that is kind of working for me right now. Babies have bigger heads and that is pretty good. Okay, so now we need to um, have the eyes, you know, they have that eyebrow shadow, it's black anyway, the black cap. And this is an emperor penguin, by the way, I believe there's 21 kinds of penguins, in case you ever wondered about that. Um, so that's probably pretty good. I could probably bring it lower. The eye is going to be bigger eventually. I think that'll work. Yes. I'm going to bring it lower just because I want I don't want the the hat to cover both of these eyebrows. I I want something to be kind of visible. Just more interesting to look at. Oh, that's not right. Taller head. That'll be right. Now we're going to go where the shoulder meets, we go up a little bit, and that's where we're going to start our hat. We're going to swoop our hat around. We might cover up part of the eyebrow, and we might not. It really depends on you. Um, I might want to swoop up a little bit more like that. And this is going to be fat because it's knit. And this is going to be fatter. And we're going to have it bulky over here. And it's not going to come up straight this way, it's going to come up at an angle. And if we make a cute little, little white tassel, that's probably better. It'll, look, it'll make our little penguin look cuter. Okay, and that's looking a little bit messy right now. Let me erase the lines. So... And we'll have maybe we'll figure that out later. Okay, so let's give him a little scarf, and this will have to be a little bit fatter here. And also there'll be a little fatter part here. And you might want to do two little rolls there. Now this is going to be narrower at the top and then wider at the bottom. So swooping down, you might want to bring it down more and then have some kind of gather there.
So we have this line separating and this one that doesn't. So the arm is going to go on top. Okay, now let's throw a scarf. And we're just going to make it narrower to wider. And we don't want it parallel. That's fine, because this is different. It's not just parallel to all the way. And we'll just leave that like that, like that for now. Okay, so now we have to get our feet in. So he's coming straight down, and then his weight is going to be off of this leg. So he's going to come around, and swoop. Something like that. And when you do that, the feet are all going to line up this way, so that foot is going to be in this direction, just back of it. Let's give them turkey toes. Let's well, Maybe they're webbed, I don't know. I'm sure they are webbed. And over here we'll do the same, but he's um, lower. A little fat behind. And this one is, this is his post leg, and this is, he's holding it. So we'll just put toes like this, and that way you don't have to draw a leg. And he's balancing on a board. And so when you come, it'll be a little bit longer in the front, otherwise he's going to pitch head first <laughs> into the snow. And then it'll come swooping up. And this is more of a curve than that because of the perspective that you're looking at. And this will be at an angle. Not, It's not going to be parallel with the edge of the paper. But there's an angle there. And that is your little, uh, little penguin that you're going to transfer to your paper. this is getting a little bit long and so I'm just gonna turn on some music and speed it up you can sit back and relax the people who want to paint along I'll share my colors the colors are Payne's gray and Indian throne blue these two colors I used on the Cardinal and the three new colors are phthalo green Quinn magenta and Hansa yellow and then for those people who are very passionate about wanting to paint animals in January, I'm going to be opening a Patreon platform dedicated to teaching animals in both watercolor and acrylic. Stay tuned, and here's the music. Mm -hmm.